Uh, this is Omar Dawood, and today is going to be a brief discussion on sideroblastic anemia. Okay, so what is a sideroblastic anemia? Well, first let's let's just decode this word. What in the world does anemia even mean? Well, anemia. Anemia is just when you have a decrease in the circulating red blood cell mass, okay? So, obviously, in sideroblastic anemia, we'd have a decrease in the overall circulating red blood cell mass because that is the definition of an anemia. But we have to further decode what is this word, sideroblastic. Well, sideroblastic anemia is actually a subclassification of a subclassification of anemia. So what are the three large subclassifications of anemia? There are three of them. And what are those three? Okay. Well, one, you have macrocytic anemias. One, you have normocytic anemias. And the other ones are microcytic anemias. So in every single one of these three, what is the shared feature that you think is going to be? That's right. An overall decrease in the circulating red blood cell mass. That by definition is an anemia. So why these different three words? Well, macro, normal, and micro just refer to the size of the red blood cell. So in a microcytic anemia, you're going to have a decrease in the production of the size of the red blood cells. In a normal cytic anemia, you're going to have a decrease in the, you're, I'm sorry, you're going to have a normal size red blood cells. And in a macrocytic anemia, you're actually going to have increase in the size of red blood cells. But keep in mind, in all three of these conditions, the overall red blood cell mass is decreased okay so where does sideroblastic anemia fall within this paradigm well it is a type of microcytic anemia so what are the different types of microcytic anemias let's let's open up a new discussion on microcytic anemias very briefly so we can understand sideroblastic anemia <clears throat> right so here we have our microcytic anemias right they're small. And the problem in all microcytic anemias is that there is a decrease in the production of hemoglobin. Okay? That is the problem in all different types of, uh, of microcytic anemias. So what is hemoglobin? Hemoglobin. Well, hemoglobin is comprised of heme and globin, okay, our globin chain, right? Remember our alpha and beta globin chains? And, and heme is comprised of iron plus protoporphyrin, okay? So, in, if, so let, let's think about this, right? So all three, all these three things, they comprise hemoglobin, and if, of, if you have a decrease in any one of these three things, you're going to get a decrease in the production of hemoglobin. So if you have a decrease in the production of iron, you're going to get a decrease in the production of heme. And when you get a decrease in the production of heme, you get a decrease in the production of hemoglobin. And when that happens, what do you get? You get a microcytic anemia. Okay. So likewise, if you get a decrease in protoporphyrin, you get a decrease in the production of heme. Then you get a decrease in the production of hemoglobin, and what do you get? A microcytic anemia. And what about our globin? Well, if you get a decrease in the production of globin, you get a decrease in the production of hemoglobin, and when that happens, what do you get? You get a microcytic anemia. So where does sideroblastic anemia fall within this paradigm? Well, right here. Sideroblastic anemia by definition, is a decrease in the production of protoporphyrin 
leading to a decrease in the production of hemoglobin, leading to a microcytic anemia. So let's go ahead and understand that just a little bit more. Okay, so I'm talking about this molecule called protoporphyrin. Now, what in the world is protoporphyrin? What, what, what's going on? What's going on here? Well, let's see. How do I synthesize? How does our body? Let's evaluate and understand the biochemical pathway with how our body synthesizes protoporphyrin. Because if we can understand the biochemical pathway of protoporphyrin synthesis and see what's wrong. In that pathway, then whatever is wrong in that pathway, we can understand that there will be a decrease in the production of protoporphyrin, and therefore a decrease in the production of hemoglobin, and therefore a microcytic anemia. So let's understand the pathway. Okay, so how does protoporphyrin start? Well, we start with a molecule of succinyl CoA. Okay, we start with the molecule of succinyl CoA, and succinyl CoA is converted into ALA via the enzyme ALA synthase. Then ALA is converted into profo. Prophobolinogen, and that is processed by ALA dehydrogenase. Okay, ALA dehydrogenase. Okay, and then protoporphyrin makes its journey into the mitochondria where it's converted from prophobolinogen into protoporphyrin, the exact molecule that we're talking about. So we start with succinyl-CoA, and that's not spelled correctly. We start with succinyl-CoA. We convert that into ALA. ALA gets converted into prophobolinogen, and then prophobolinogen makes its way into the mitochondria as protoporphyrin, and then there is an enzyme called ferrochelatase. Okay, I don't have to. I'll I'll, I'll abbreviate it as FER as ferrochelatase that takes iron and complexes it to protoporphyrin to make heme. Okay, and then hemoglobin. Well, that, that's our hemoglobin right there. So we're talking about sideroblastic anemia and sideroblastic anemia is a decrease in the production of protoporphyrin, okay? So, there is a decrease in the production of protoporphyrin. So, what causes this decrease in the production of protoporphyrin? Well, one, you can have congenital defects that involve this enzyme right here. If there is some congenital defect that knocks out ALA synthase, you're not going to get protoporphyrin. And when you don't get protoporphyrin, what, what molecule do you not get? That's right, you don't get heme. And when you don't get heme, what do you not get? You don't get hemoglobin. And when you don't get hemoglobin, what do you get? A microcytic anemia. Excellent. Okay, so that's one way. Okay, one way that's supposed to be a one is congenital congenital defect in ALA synthase, okay? What are some other ways you can get this decrease in protoporphyrin? Well, another way you can get this decrease in protoporphyrin is sometimes they can be acquired, right? So here is going to be our acquired list. Right, AQ. I'll just abbreviate it AQ. Okay, so what is our acquired list? Well, one, alcoholism. 
Okay, alcoholism basically poisons the mitochondria, and it doesn't, and it causes it to not work properly. So, what happens when your mitochondria isn't working properly? You're going to get a decrease in the production of protoporphyrin. Okay, what else can cause it? Lead poisoning. Okay, now what does lead poisoning do? So L L E A D lead poisoning. Well, lead poisoning actually causes a decrease in the function of A L A D and ferrochelatase. Okay, so that's lead poisoning. Okay, and how I like to remember that is L A D. It sounds like a lad, and that sounds like lead, lad and lead. So that's easy a way to remember that lead causes a dysfunctionality in ALAD or ALAD. And also remember that it's also furichilitase as well. Okay? And when you get lead poisoning, you get a knockout of that. You get a knockout of that. And you basically don't get protoporphyrin. And if you think about it, you don't get heme. Right? So it's kind of like a double double whammy. So, you, so if you get this decrease in protoporphyrin, you get a decrease in heme. You get a decrease in hemoglobin. You get a microcytic anemia. And then, I'm sorry, you get a sideroblastic anemia, and then you get a microcytic anemia, okay? And the last one would be a B6 deficiency, so a decrease in B6. Now, how does a decrease in B6 affect this pathway? Well, if you think about it, um, uh, well, I actually have to tell you, in, in ALA, ALAS, this enzyme requires... B6, vitamin B6 as a cofactor, okay, to function properly. So ALS requires B6 to form ALA. Well, if that's knocked out or if that's in deficiency, you don't get protoporphyrin. And when you don't get protoporphyrin, you get a decrease in heme, you get a decrease in hemoglobin, and then you get a microcytic anemia. And specifically, you're going to get a sideroblastic anemia, okay? So the last thing I just wanted to tell you, since now we understand how we get a sideroblastic anemia, is, well, there are different types of anemia, right? We talked about iron deficiency anemia. We talked about uh, uh, sideroblastic anemia. If you have a decrease in the production of hemoglobin, if you have a decrease in the production of globin, that's called a thalassemia. So I'm not going to get into a discussion of uh, those other conditions, but I just wanted to give you one brief idea of one more thing that's happening in a sideroblastic anemia. If you think about it, in a sideroblastic anemia, the, you have a decrease in the production of protoporphyrin, and when you have a decrease in the production of protoporphyrin, let's draw that out, protoporphyrin, Can that be complexed with iron via which enzyme? Ferrochilitis to form heme, right? Can you can can that can that occur? Can iron be complexed? No, it can't be complex because you have a knockout of protoporphyrin for the reasons that we described before. So what happens to this iron? Well, it's just going to build up. And when it builds up, iron is a great oxidator. It's a, it's a great, I'm sorry, it's, a, it's very good at causing oxidative stress. Ox stress. That's what iron is really, really great at. Okay? <coughs> and so, on histology, right, um, not only... Uh, are we able to? I'm sorry. Not on. I'm sorry. Let me let me let me repeat that. Um, iron does cause a lot of um, uh, stress in the on the cell, causing it to lice, causing it to you know a lot of red blood cells to be decreased in their you know mass, leading to an anemia. But on histology, you can actually view this buildup of of iron in these in these premature red blood cells now keep in mind everything we've de uh, described is happening in a premature red blood cell okay uh, the whole process we've described so on histology what do we see on histology here's our nucleus okay 
And what happens is that the mitochondria, all the mitochondria that are now ha that now have a buildup in iron in their in their in, in them will complex around the mitochondria into this thing called a ringed sideroblast. So that's the whole point I wanted to get. Uh, uh, this is the whole point I wanted to get at, is that you get a sideroblast, okay, on histology, okay? And this is stained by a Prussian blue stain. Prussian blue, okay? And I encourage you to view pictures of a ring sideroblast um, in order to get a better idea of what that looks like, okay? Now, that was a brief discussion on sideroblastic anemia.